Good morning guys, it's uh, it's a little past 8am and I've just took my phone off charge from 100%. It's a little bit early to be pointing a camera in my face, but I wanted to take you guys along for the, you know, the day in the life experience. I've got a lecture at 9am, um, so I'm going to go and get ready for that. Alright, well, I'm up now and a little bit more awake. I've had the chance to use the phone a little bit and we've clocked in. Managed to clock in 33 minutes screen on time so far. When I get ready, I typically like to listen to music and stuff in the shower and then I'll browse TikTok for a little bit, watch some YouTube videos and just do some general other bits while I'm making like my coffee. I am running a little bit late this morning though, so I'm gonna sign onto my computer and get started for the day. Well past me is doing that, I'll catch you up on my first impressions. Out of the box I noticed the flat display which is more than welcome to me, I never really understood the curve anyway. Cliche I know, but the phone feels premium in the hand despite the choice of materials on the back. What do people call it? Glastic? Okay. I'd go as far as saying I thought the design on the back was nothing short of ugly, not sure why but it felt very art deco to me, hopefully that doesn't make a comeback, but it has significantly grown on me now, I kinda like it. One thing I don't like is the lack of an SD card slot. Anyway. Hmm, nice morning session filled of lectures and productivity, right? Wrong, I spent most of the time on the S21. Even though I should have been working, there were introductory sessions uh, It's the first time I've been back since Christmas. All of it's relevant per se, but it's not, it doesn't quite require 100%, but that's the excuse I tell myself anyway. So I've been on my phone a bit more, my screen on time is an hour and 11 minutes so far. We're still into the morning. That's quite a lot considering I should have been doing a lot of work. We're gonna go shoot some videos now because that's integrated in like my daily sort of workflow. They're just short videos and they're gonna be shot on my phone. So it's pertinent to like the whole, you know, battery usage thing. I'll also be able to show you how the camera performs in app. So to expand a little bit more on that in-app camera point I just made, iPhones are renowned for being quite good when you just take them into Snapchat or Instagram and want to take a photo, but most people don't realise that's because there's very few phones running on iOS, so Apple can give the developers a special set of instructions to make sure they get the absolute most out of the cameras. Then when we take a look at Samsung, them along with many others use Android OS, and with many others comes many more camera configs and many more screen sizes. And app developers simply can't optimize for all of them. So what you end up with is a very base level optimization, uh, just allowing you to use the camera in the app. And this isn't a gripe for Samsung per se, just Android in general. Anyway, enough talking about it. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, I'm not going to keep flogging this point here. I'm going to put the footage up beside me and you guys can tell me what you think. But I'm not jumping on the bandwagon of Samsung cameras are terrible. Let me show you how they perform in the camera app so they can hopefully redeem themselves a little bit for you. All the shots you're looking at here are out of the ultra wide lens. There is some distortion, as expected, but it's sharp enough and I'm happy with the colours. The best images in most scenarios are out of this standard wide lens. This is the one most people will be using, it's sharp, you get wide dynamic range and the colours look great. It produces more than acceptable quality for social media in a range of lighting conditions. Then we're over to the 64 megapixel telephoto lens, which genuinely surprised me. You get insanely sharp pictures in good light without any reduction in dynamic range. You might see a slight reduction in contrast, resulting in, well, a more natural look, but overall very impressive. And for the sake of including them, here's some images at 30 times zoom as well. I guess you could use it at a push, but I don't see anyone using this daily. Just to touch on it, this is 8K video at 24fps. In this scenario, it does look good, but it suffers from no stabilization. You'll get more usable footage out of 4K or full HD. So this specific colorway is definitely unique for sure. I've heard some people call it the Thanos phone, and to me it gives me some like Saints Row sort of vibes. Regardless of colour, I do have to give them credit on this fantastic finish, and I'm a massive fan of the camera wrapping around of this like single piece design into the bump. When it comes to the colour for me though, I'm not personally a massive fan of it, so I will be picking up one of Samsung's own leather cases I think. It seems to wrap around the bump really well and hide the sides, but what do you guys think? Are you a fan of the colour? And for the back three cameras, people are calling these traffic lights. Well, make of that as you will, I guess it's just because of the orientation. I also wanted to quickly discuss how underrated it is to have a phone that fits properly in one hand. A big phone users will understand this as well, but after half a day's use, this is an absolute pleasure to hold and use. I find when you get to like XS Max, 12 Pro Max territory, fine, they're great to hold if you have two hands, but when you're just trying to text sometimes and you can't reach the other side of the screen, ah. 
It's probably about time I give you guys an update on the battery life and the time. So we're at about 5pm, we're still at 54%. Now, the S21 has a 4000 milliamp battery. So that's the same as last year's S20 and with the same size screen as well. But the S21 does have a more efficient processor. In the UK, we're getting an Exynos 2100, it's 5 nanometer, and this phone will pack more than enough power for you to play your favourite games for extended periods of time and watch all the YouTube and Netflix you fancy. The phone does get relatively warm under load, but performance is spot on and battery life is more than enough to get you through the day, as you will see. For charging, we have 25 watt through a lead, a 15 watt wireless charge and a 4.5 watt reverse wireless charge. Now this doesn't sound too powerful, quite frankly it's not, but at least it's still a feature. Following this new trend, there's no plug in the box, instead you just get a USB-C to USB-C cable. Is that enough? Well you tell me, but I think the third party manufacturers are having fun with plugs either way. Alright, point made. See ya. Three displays in front of me. I thought I'd watch YouTube just for the, uh, you know, the video. Now for the S21, the display is back to 1080p, which is unfortunate from the 1440p we saw on the S20, but I think you'd find it hard to notice a huge loss in quality unless you were looking for it. And remember, this will also mean better battery life overall. The redeeming factors are the awesome peak brightness at 1300 nits, it's also HDR10+, resulting in some fantastic colours and contrast. And there's a maximum refresh rate of 120Hz, making browsing and socials super smooth and buttery. Now the speakers are stereo and they're fine for daily use. Once you get all the way up, especially playing music, they do start to distort ever so slightly, but you'll have no problems for general YouTube videos and loudspeaker calls. So this will typically be my down point in the day. I'm going to go make a cup of tea, catch up on some comments, whether that be on TikTok or YouTube, do some browsing and hopefully not pour water on my phone. I think I'll start planning out my major building project for uni, ignore the date. I'm going to do that on Notion on the S21 as there's only a few bits to get the ball rolling. Typically the phone won't see much YouTube or Discord from here on out or much intensive battery drain because I spend most of the evening on my computer. I will still use it for Facebook Messenger, video calls and WhatsApp though. As far as locking methods go, we have the good old trusty pin code, the super fast in-screen fingerprint sensor which is great for when you have a mask on, and the face ID. Well, it leaves a little to be imagined. I wasn't out and about or wearing a mask today and I still had to try anywhere from three to five times to get it to work. It's 25 to 12. We're still on 34% amazingly. It's been 14 hours and 20 minutes since I unplugged it and we've had four hours 32 screen time on. This has been a combination of YouTube, socials, PUBG, the camera, Spotify, and Notion. And I'd say that's a pretty good representation of for most part students, but many people's day-to-day -day lives. This has been fun, but it's good night from me. Man, I was tired by the end of filming that. I kind of contemplated shooting the end bit the next day and pretending it was the same day, but I couldn't do that to you guys. You just have to deal with me being a little bit quieter, I guess. So the final verdict, a sit indoors day with the S21 and Let's be honest, that's a bit more realistic in this current time anyway. To round up a few points, the cameras are great when they're not being used on social media and the videos more than suffice. The overall fit and finish of this phone is awesome despite me not being the biggest fan of the colorway, I can still appreciate it for what it is. Performance wise, it's more than capable of handling anything you might do on a day to day basis from games, movies, that sort of thing. The colours and brightness out of the screen genuinely surprised me. and. It is a little bit upsetting that it's 1080p, but I can't say out of the whole day, I even noticed. I guess if you're doing like photo sensitive 4K sort of work, you might be able to tell, but. Also, if you haven't tried 120 Hertz on a phone, I suggest you go down to a phone shop when you can and try it out. It is so smooth. But should you buy it? Well, if you're looking for a premium phone that's on the smaller side with good performance and good battery life, and you haven't upgraded in a while, then it's not a bad choice at all. But if you've got like an iPhone 11, iPhone 12, I'd even say S10 or S20, I probably wouldn't say it was worth it. It just comes down to the fact that it doesn't really offer anything new. As always guys, thank you so much for watching and I mean when I say this, I really appreciate all of the support recently. Please bear in mind that this was a day in the life of with some tangents as opposed to a full in-depth review. And you know what? Because I appreciate your support so much, if you're from the UK and you comment your favourite tech product and why within the next 24 hours, then you'll be in with the chance of winning this FIFA microphone. See ya.